Hey guys, quick Holly EFI video or just boost controller video or turbo video or whatever you want to call it. But I had a subscriber ask if I could go over the boost control setup on the Camaro. So if you guys aren't familiar, this is my 98 Camaro Holly EFI 408 billet 88 millimeter turbo. It's been like 560s at 126 in the eighth, mostly set up for eighth mile, but definitely going to be coming out with some more content with this thing. Uh, now the burnout truck's done and Clyde's been running great and all that. It's time to, I think, take this to the next level. So to go over the boost control setup on this, I am running the Holly EFI. I'm running a dual solenoid setup, which I'll show you guys. And I'll show you some of the plumbing, how it's all set up, uh, just to kind of go over the whole thing and explain it to you guys. Here is the inside setup. So the car, I initiate the boost controller off of trans brake. Here is the CO2 bottle that it runs off of, so I am using the CO2 bottle. Uh, I'll do a burnout, reach back here and open this up, which then feeds the CO2 up here to the boost control solenoids. Uh, you have your feed and release, so the air comes in from the CO2 bottle here. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then this is the one that releases the pressure. Uh, and then this goes out to the wastegate up underneath the hood. Uh, and I'll show you guys that here in a second. So pretty simple setup. Just trans brake will come on, CO2 will feed it. And then I'm running the Holly Mac valves. So that's what I've used. They've worked great. Had them in the car, never had an issue. This has been a super simple setup. I've also had the CO2 bottle in this car for like three seasons and never had to refill it. So that's been pretty amazing actually. So as you guys can see, the line comes out here, goes down and feeds the wastegate, which I'll raise the car up. So you guys can see that, but this is how I ran it out here. And then the wires for the dome sensor come down uh, as well. So I'm running a dome sensor to monitor the pressure on top of the gate. Here is the underside of the car. I have two wastegates on the car because when I had only one, it worked great on the small turbo, went to the big turbo, and then uh, had some boost creep issues. So I added a second one that's prioritized off that pipe, pretty decent. So all it does is the CO2 comes in from inside the car from the CO2 bottle and the boost control solenoids. And then Y's right here. One goes to the top of this one. One goes to the top of this wastegate. So for every pound of CO2 pressure you add to the wastegate, you should gain a pound of boost, but then you get into back pressure and stuff like that. But that's the general rule of thumb. And then this here is the dome pressure sensor. So if I command seven pounds of pressure to go on top of the gate of CO2, this monitors it. So if it sees eight, then it tells the boost control solenoids to let one pound out. If uh, it's at three, it knows to add more and whatever. So whatever you command, this is what reads it, feeds back to the ECU so it knows to add more or less based on that. So uh, real simple setup, feed, Y, and then pressure right off this one. So some wastegates are nice. They have like a second piece that's tapped here uh, and then you can actually put the dome sensor right in it. But this works great. I've had no, zero issues with it and stuff like that. So. Uh, that is the setup for the wastegates and the plumbing of the CO2 to the top of them. All right, everyone, so I opened up Poly here. I got a tune where the car went 564 on 20 pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the boost control setup. And it's set up for a dual port with the two MAC valves and then a solenoid configuration dual Holly, control method, dome pressure only. And then I run it off of boost by time um, off of the trans brake launch enable uh, and stuff like that. So there's a little bit more of that. You can pin map it and then you have T-brake launch and trans brake. So, and then rev limiter is my two step. So I've tied all that in on the wiring side of it. Uh, and everything that I've done setup wise is if you follow Holly's like boost control setup, this is, they'll tell you where to wire it to the right pins, everything, just like on this. Uh, I have it on A3 as the trans brake. Dome pressure is A12. And then the outputs is B10 for the plus solenoid and B3 for the minus solenoid because those have to be on a PW minus. A lot of people get confused and they don't put their boost control solenoids on a positive. They'll either put it on like a 12 volt positive or a ground and it's not. It needs to be pulse width, mo pulse width modulated. Say that again. And uh, so that's what you got to do to get those to work correctly. So if you come over here to boost by time. This is my boost curve, so zero, zero seconds. So I'm putting 12 on top of the gate. It has like a seven pound spring on it. If I remember right, I think on this one, it made like 11 or 12 pounds and it spun. Actually, no, it went a good pass. So uh, I probably left on 11 or 12 pounds, went a mid 130, 60 foot, and then 0.25 into the run, it ramps it to 18.3. It was pretty good prep that day. And then by like 1.3, Two, five, it's pretty much all in. And then I just went ahead and added one more pound up a top. Uh, so I'm trying to get mostly all of it in by like half a second. 
uh, which with the big single turbo, it lags anyway. So I'm commanding it sooner, but it's still the turbo lags to get there as fast as what I call for it to get there. Um, and otherwise that's, that's pretty much it. You can go into like boost builder where you're wanting to pull timing to help you try to gain boost and all that stuff. I don't really need to do that in this car. It's pretty much done everything I wanted it to do and in a fairly quick manner. So on this one, the dome control setup, I'm using the stock PIDs. It seemed to work great. I'm sure there's probably some tuning can be done in there. I haven't ever played with that a ton, uh, but it doesn't seem to overshoot real bad. And it makes what I call for it. I've done the same thing on the Buick. It's worked great there. So the last part of that is the solenoid source pressure. I have it at fixed and my regulator set at 125 PSI. A little bit higher pressure, helps get to the solenoid quicker. Uh, helps get out to the wastegate quicker, a little quicker response. I'm sure there's probably pros and cons to all of that. On fix, that's also if you're running a like little air compressor and stuff like that. Uh, so you can do that as well. Target rate limiter, some of these other settings. A lot of this is box stock from Holley. It works good. It's never given me any issues. So that's pretty much the setup. I mean, you guys can come in here too and see where boost pressure above so if the car sees above 24 psi it reverts to wastegate so it more or less will just turn off the boost controller go back to spring make seven pounds you could have it uh, cut ignition do all sorts of other things so there's a bunch of safeties in here that you can do uh, you can do it modulated off of tps that's like what we do on the buick during the half mile stuff but usually drag racing boost by time uh, and then you just off a trans brake and then you can always look at a log and say, oh, I spun at 0.7 into the run. And then you come in here and adjust this and create your curve and whatever you're trying to do to get the car to hook and work. So that is pretty much the whole setup from the CO2 bottle to how it works off trans brake, solenoids, the way I have it plumbed into the wastegates and set up in the computer. All right, everyone, so that is as simple as my boost control setup is in the Camaro. I'd recommend doing the same thing. I've had it on the car for three seasons. It's been awesome. CO2 is amazing. I haven't had to even refill the bottle. It's just been maintenance free. It's worked every time I've asked it to. Uh, the only thing I guess I didn't talk about is I have a switch that I flip on that activates the boost control solenoids. So if I'm just driving around town, it's on wastegate. Once I flip the switch, that's what feeds the 12 volt to the solenoids. And then I'm on the boost controller. So it's a super simple, if it's not on, it's gonna be on low boost wastegate. If I flip that switch, then it activates the boost controller and whatever I have programmed into this is what it's gonna feed it boost wise. Uh, so that is the whole setup, pretty much real simple from the CO2 bottle, trans brake, solenoids, and the wastegate up front. That's how I have it all plumbed, it's worked great. Hopefully that helps answer some of your questions. And if you guys wanna see more of these like little tech videos on plumbing and wiring and stuff, how I have stuff set up on the car, let me know in the comments and I can do some quick videos, little tech videos to help you guys understand it. So maybe if you're doing the same thing, it helps you when building your car. So if you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys next time.